I get asked a lot about my settings in AQ, so I thought I'd go through a lot of the settings, which ones you should be turning on, which ones you should be turning off, things you should know about in the advanced settings, and a lot of other things, keybinds, stuff like that. Let's go over it in this video. All right, we'll get into the graphics settings, but very quick, I want to go over this first. So if you're looking for settings that will increase your FPS in AQ Worlds, none of the settings really will. The best thing you can do for that is just turning off everything and turning off the players and turning off all the animations and all that. So if that's all you're watching this video for, nothing will nothing will really help that much unless you just want to make the game look like it's a, just a blank screen. The reason why is because the Flash game, Flash does not use your GPU, no graphics card, doesn't matter if you have a 4090. Uh, it only uses, let's say this is 4 gigabytes and this is 4 gigabytes, it's only going to be using... 4 gigabytes of RAM at most, the 32-bit uh, program. You have a CPU with 4 cores. Guess what? L only one of those cores. That core has two threads. It's only going to be using half of that CPU. It's only going to be using one thread of that CPU. So, the best thing you can do to have a game that runs well, to have an AQW that runs well, is have a very, very, very fast single core performance cpu i think the best you can get is like the really expensive amd and intel uh, desktop cpus at the moment but uh, yeah so if you're playing on a phone or a laptop your single thread performance is very low and that's why because of battery life and stuff like that it's it's fine that it's low but it's because it's to save your battery power but yeah that's why your game is lagging and that's why mine might look smoother than yours i play on a very fast cpu so that there's a quick explanation for that. Let's get into the settings. All right, first setting is allow quest log turn-ins. So this lets you turn in quests in your log. Very quick example would be, so if you take a quest from like an NPC at the start of the map, like let's say we take this quest right here, and then we don't have access to the quest anymore. So yeah, we, we can't click it. We can hit uh, L on the keyboard, which is the default bind to open that. And you, if the quest is complete, you can just turn it in right there. You don't have to go back to the NPC. Very good. All right, I'll try to be really quick through all of these. Auto untarget undead. Definitely turn this on. Definitely turn this on. Uh, yes, uh, that it does what it says. It will untarget the, un the dead targets. You don't want to be targeting a dead target. Uh, yeah. yeah, auto untarget self. Definitely turn this on. If you've ever been healing and you're just healing yourself and you're targeting yourself for some reason with the heal and not the monster you're fighting, that's why. Turn that on. Battle Analyzer, very cool. Click start, it'll track all the gold you've been earning, all the XP, everything it says there. Damage, DPS, all that stuff, very cool, very good. Battle Pets, why do I have that off? I don't, I don't know why I have that off. Uh, I don't. This will allow any Battle Pet that's fighting with you to use the animation, even if you're not using a Battle Pet class, very cool. Although you might not want it if you wanna see your class animations, but very cool. This one is something I get asked about a lot right here, uh, and you can search character pages here, which is cool. If anyone's name, just type it in there. But uh, character select screen. So if you turn this on, that's like what you see when I log out of the game. So if I log out right here, uh, it allows you to swap between characters. You can change your servers. You can see what server I'm logged into. There's character options here. So you can ask for a password. You can have a character list, so you can add other accounts. So if you have more than, like if you have an alt account, you can add it here, and it'll actually show up in the UI. It's actually really cool. Uh, yeah, it's just a cool UI thing that you can toggle in the settings there. That's why mine looks different than maybe yours. Okay, next up. So we have a chat UI. I would turn this on. Uh, this will hide the chat automatically, and it just makes it look cleaner, in my opinion. It's not as good as the not uh, chat UI version. And I would turn on minimal mode as well. That's what makes mine look like that. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, definitely do that. There's also chat settings for timestamps. So if you want timestamps, you can turn that on or off. And yeah, it goes by server time, which is East Coast, uh, North America. And uh, disable red messages. Definitely turn that on if you don't. If you, so you're not seeing the red message spam and you just see the messages you want to see, like people typing in chat and stuff like that. Like I remember before this was a setting in the game, People would type in chat in a boss room and it would just like fly up because if you're spamming skills, it would just go away. So very good to disable that. The next one is class active aura UI. I would definitely turn this on. Uh, you could disable uh, aura text and tooltips. Might help a little tiny bit with lag because it's less text on screen, less visual noise. 
I have it turned on because I don't really mind it. But yeah, if you don't want to see the skill text that like says what skills you're using and stuff like that, you can turn it on. Uh, here's an example of what the uh, skill aura looks like. So if you're using a class with skills, it'll be like these little things below it. And you can highlight it for what skill it uh, is used. Very useful if you're using Archmage and you want to see if you're in a corporeal ascension or not. Because there's two different forms you can be in. So if you want to check, you can highlight the text under there and see which one you're in. So very useful for that. I don't really use it otherwise, but it is nice to see like how many stacks. Like say you're using like caster, you can see how many stacks of the skill you have. Uh, useful for that, and I would definitely turn it on for that reason. Color sets, I'm going to be honest, I haven't messed around with this too much. But it lets you save colors, so save sets of colors. So it would be useful if you switch between a lot of CC armors often. So check that out if that's interesting to you. Alright, so this one is also one I get asked a lot, my custom drop UI. Uh, so I have mine at the top uh, with a little button that will toggle it on or off right here, which is really nice. But sometimes I forget to turn it on and then I never have the drops. I, I wish they would make the... Uh, notification more uh notifying because it's really uh kind of lame right now so when you get a drop it'll show up at the top here with my settings that's the way i prefer it you can change it so the why it's on the top is with the inverted menu i turn it on uh no warning when declining drops i hide the drop notifications uh, because those just spam your screen that that actually will add to your like quite a bit uh if you're uh the drop notifications that actually will lag you if you're getting a bunch of drops rapidly yeah, so I would definitely turn that off unless you want to see them. Uh, open to menu, draggable menu, lock in position, reset quantity warnings. I would turn that off as well. That's really annoying. Very annoying. Uh, decline all drops. This is very helpful. I have this bound to my uh, um, arrow keys on my keyboard, to my left arrow key. So definitely, definitely uh, bind this in your key binds. Very helpful if you have like a bunch of drops you're not going to pick up and you don't want to... You used to... What used to happen in the game uh, is you'd log out and log back in to get rid of all those drops. So you don't want to go like, no, 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 no. And then you have to like, and then next time you get a drop, like all the drops come down on your screen. You have to go, no, no, no. Like, okay. So very useful. Turn that on and bind it to a key. Uh, disable chat scrolling. Turn that off. Disable damage numbers. Uh, this will help you with lag, but I would not turn that on. It does. It won't help you that much. And seeing the damage numbers is cool so this is a big one damage strobe i will turn this off and we can see how it looks uh see how the character is flashing white it's really apparent with a uh, larger characters like a big dragon on your screen like a zoomed in see how it's like blinking white and i haven't seen it so long it looks horrible so if your game has that you need to go and disable strobing I would never play with this on. There is absolutely no reason. I don't even know why they put it in the game. It should not be in the game by default. So, yeah. Definitely, definitely do not have that setting turned on. Okay, next setting is disable monster animations. This will help you with your lag uh, if you're lagging. So, turn that on if you're lagging. Turn it off if you just want to see monster animations. I have it off because I like seeing monster animations. I think it like really hurts the game not having visual cues and stuff like that. So I think it's good to have that off if you can afford to. If your thing's lagging so bad, I would turn that off. That will help quite a bit. Uh, disable quest pop up. Uh, def definitely turn it on. Don't want to see that. Uh, disable quest tracker. I have it off. But uh, yeah, you can pick or choose. A lot of these stuff is uh, a lot of this stuff is a uh, personal preference. It's not really going to affect your frame or anything. Disable self animations. I have that off. Disable skill animations. I have this on, but only for, but I have it so it shows only my animations. This will help with lag big time, big time, big time. So if you have this off, every animation from every class, from every player will show in the room. If you turn it on and then you toggle this, you'll only see your own animations from your own class. And I much prefer that. Way less lag, way less like visual noise all over the screen. I think it's just better. Uh, so I would do that. Weapon animations, I have them off, and you can have yours only, but uh, yeah, I just, I just have them off. But uh, it's still showing my weapon animations, I don't, it was not, oh, I don't have, I don't have weapon animations disabled. What I would do, I reset my, uh, my PC got reset recently, and yeah, this, so I would normally have that on, so you don't see other people's weapon animations, and then you keep your own, so you just do your own weapon animation. But uh, yeah, that'll save you with lag. And if you want to save with lag anymore, keep yours off as well, of course. 
Display FPS, that's what it says, it shows you FPS at the top, <laughs> so you can see the uh, 10 FPS you're getting in this game. Even I don't even get that great of FPS. Drag will drops, leave that off if you have the drop menu I'm using, but uh, depends on your drop menu, uh, or whether or not you even have a drop menu going. Freeze and lock a uh, monster in location. This is important to turn on. It does, it uh, it works well. You're still gonna have the issues with the uh, range classes and stuff bugging out, uh, like uh, VHL not having range and stuff. It, it still that still happens with a uh, server lag and stuff like that. Uh, but this helps a bit. It locks monsters, so you can just go up and auto attack them, and you can stand in the same spot and auto attack, and people aren't dragging the monster on the other to the other side of the county. Uh, it yeah, good good thing to have on. High ground items. I would turn this on, <laughs> but personal preference, I'm not a huge fan of ground items. I have it off currently, but sometimes I do turn it on if people are being annoying with ground items. I have like large leggy ones, but uh, yeah, you can show your, your ground item only as well, which is really good. Hide healing bubbles, turn that off because I want to see those. Hide player names. So I turn this on, but I only hide my own name. I think this is a clean solution. I think everyone should be doing this. I saw Ray playing the other day and he didn't have that turned on. It looked weird. It's weird seeing like watching someone play the game like from their point of view and seeing their name above their head. I would never play with that on. Your, your name is already on the screen if you forgot what your username is. It's already on the top left of the screen. I don't think you need it above your head. I think it looks way cleaner turned off uh, with only, yeah. It hide guild names too, which is good. Or only, but uh, yeah, uh, pretty neat there. I like seeing people's guild names though, so I leave that on. You can hide all the players. This will help with like a lot, although you're playing an MMO, so I, I wouldn't turn this on unless you really need to for lag. You have a really, uh, you're really struggling. Hide UI, uh, good for screenshots, but the, you can keybind uh, your UI. You can keybind into like a screenshot mode, so I wouldn't even touch this. It's not really that useful. Visible monsters, also, you can just click in the top here uh, to make all the monsters invisible, so I wouldn't touch the setting at all. There's no reason to go into settings for that. Item drop block list. Okay, this is a big one that is super helpful that players might not know about at all. Uh, so I'll preview how this works here. Okay, so the item drop block list, uh, there's no setting you need to turn on or anything for it. Uh, and the block list in the settings, you can see what items are blocked and unblock them if you accidentally block an item. But what you do is you hover over a item that you don't want to see drop anymore, so you'll never see it drop again. If you if you hold shift and left click on it, like that, it'll say, do you want to add it to your block list, yes or no? And of course, you can add it there, like that. So click yes, and it's gone, and you'll never see it again. Very, very helpful. I have hundreds of items on my block list. Okay, next up is keybinds. You definitely want to mess with this. If you haven't already, there's a lot of things you can bind, like a bank keybind. Uh, you need a bank pet in your inventory to have this work. I, I kind of wish it was just you owned a bank pet, and it, even if it was in your bank, you could still use it, but eh, it makes sense from a gameplay standpoint. Camera tool. This one's really good. If you don't have this and you like taking screenshots, so I have the camera tool bound. Uh, there's two separate camera tools. Uh, there's one that will... Uh, like have a background and one that will doesn't so this one is the normal one that will just like let you zoom in you can hide the ui very nice for taking screenshots combine that with white map and you can get a good uh character outline now if you don't want to go to white map though you just want a quick and dirty white map like that there's another bind you can use for your camera tool just go right in here you can zoom in your character zoom out you can change the back oh sorry okay you can you can you can do whatever that is. Yeah, you can change the background. You can do animations. And if you go sideways with the arrows down here, you can turn your player's head to get kind of a different angle for the screenshot if you want. Uh, so pretty cool stuff you can do with that. I, I kind of wish this tool was more powerful, to be honest. Like, I wish... It, yeah, anyway, but it's probably hard to do with that with Flash Player, but it would be really good if we had... A, like, we used to have a really good screenshot tool that would completely remove the background from your player. Man, that'd be good to have again. Like, no white outline or anything. Remember? Players probably remember that if you're watching. Maybe you don't, but miss that. I miss that a lot. There's a dash in here. If you're new to the game and you don't have that bound, uh, I would bind it to, like, I think spacebar is the default bound, but that, that's where your green bar is there. Uh, and you click spacebar and then left click on the map and it makes you dash over to that location faster than you would before. Uh, I gotta, I gotta bind jump. I think uh, V is... Player HP bar. I don't need that. 
let's just uh, bind that to up. Why not? All right. So quest log is really good to bind. Uh, it, of course, you can change where your skills are, stuff like that. Stats overview. Stats overview. What is it? Oh, that's like your class stats. World camera and all that stuff. So travel menu. That's a really good one that we haven't gone over yet, but uh, you should know about. Where is it? It's not in here. We'll go. Yeah, yeah it's right here. Travel menu is a big one. It's kind of like key binds, but for maps. You can basically key bind a map. So if you open your travel menu, you type in the map name right here. So let's say if we wanted to go to uh, Battle On, right? You would add it to the list. And then you click on it and click Travel Next. And it'll go to that map. So if we want to go this one, we Travel Next. And we're in this map. Want to go Crash Site? You get it, you get it, right? So that's really cool. Uh, what is also cool about this is you can just minimize it and whatever bind you set for the travel menu, you can click that and it'll go to the next one. You click it again. Well, once you're allowed to, you click it again, it'll go to the next one and so on and so forth. So very cool. Uh, good for fire, uh, blending light of destiny, some of the uh, weapon um, quests and stuff like that. Quests that have you going to maps like over and over again repeatedly. Really good for that, really useful. All right, next up, the quest pinner. This lets you pin quests, as it says. Uh, it'll be a little arrow up here when it's a pin quest. You could open it and see the quest. Uh, these don't save when you log out, so they're kind of useless. If they did save when you logged out, they would be super useful. I kind of wish that was a thing, but it's a flash game, so they can't do that, sadly. Uh, quest progress notifications. These are good to know where, you're, where what point in the quest you're at. So it's like if you have like something out of 100 for quests that you need to like kill 100 skeletons, that's that number that pops up on screen. So I'd leave that on. Uh, Reaccept quest of turn in. We went over that already. That's really good. Or did we? I don't know. But this will reaccept your quest uh, It once you turn it in. It can be kind of annoying for repeatable quests that you don't want to repeat. But you can just decline them. Uh, and then it won't reaccept it. But uh, for farming, this is very good. And I would leave that on. Monster type. I don't know why that isn't on for me. But let's say, for example, this is just a normal monster. So it has just the monster monster type. But for something like this, this guy is chaos, so you know that a chaos like damage would get, do more damage to him, right? So you know what kind of damage boost you'd have to use against him. Good to have that setting turned on. Smooth background art is very important to have on, uh, but it will help your frame rate if you do turn it off, although I would not sacrifice it. Uh, I'll show you. So this is what this map looks like with smooth background on. And here's what it looks like with it off. Now, with YouTube compression and all that, you might not see it, but everything looks like really blurry and low resolution on the background. It just looks really bad. So it'll help your FPS a, a tiny, like not a little bit, a little bit. But it, I don't think it's worth the visual uh, loss that you're taking the hit for. I would definitely leave smooth background on. All right, this one could help you with frame rate as well. Reduce the graphics of the players. Uh, but there's some issues with it. You can read the issues on screen right now with the white box. Uh, so yeah, it's a little finicky and it makes the game look pretty bad as well. So turn this on if you need the extra performance, but I would leave it off. I would not turn this on. I turned it on for a little bit. I haven't really tried it too much, but when I had it on, it just wasn't, was not the play there. So that's all the settings. Uh, hopefully you'll learn a thing or two, maybe maybe but they're all pretty self-explanatory if you go through them i think uh if you haven't uh went through the advanced options here you definitely should click that button and mess around with these search functions really nice as well definitely really good definitely 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 really good uh there's some gameplay stuff here as well but uh you know like you can turn your animations off if you want so that's there turn go to off so you hide your cloak uh, uh so hiding pets cloaks and all this will help your performance as well so turning all that stuff off of course will help helmets not having animations on your armor stuff like that will help your frame rate if you're looking to do that uh yeah so all that stuff you can uh turn off profanity that's the thing if you're a returning player it, and you haven't looked in the chat settings that's a brand new thing they added like a year or two ago uh i think you can technically swear in the chat now although i'm not gonna test it <laughs> like i i think you i think you're allowed to say like uh yeah like basically anything as long as it isn't like you know um hate speech you know but uh so you should you should be okay there and yeah don't be a creep but uh yeah that, that's about it that's about 
it for all the settings for the game. Like I said at the beginning, uh, the frame rate issue is more of a CPU single thread thing and it being flash player and it's just not using any of your computer performance other than the single thread on your CPU. So that's what's going to lag you and make your game look laggy more than anything. So not much you can do about that other than spending a ludicrous amount of money on a good CPU. And even then you're still going to, I still average about like 12 FPS, <laughs> but uh, between like 12 to 20 FPS is usually where I'm sitting while farming. Uh, so yeah, pay all that money for a CPU just to barely have a barely smoother game. So it's not really worth, I would not recommend doing that unless you have a ludicrous amount of money to spend on a flash game. Anyway, might be better use than uh, buying a bunch of item and donates, maybe. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyways, 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 thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this was informative or something. Maybe you learned a thing or two. Find all your key binds, do all that stuff and your game should be a bit better to play. So thank you for watching like on the video if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you're not already check out more content on my channel i upload a bunch and I have been uploading a bunch this week and uh recently so check all that stuff out and i'll see you in the next one peace